Glory to God. Amen. Well, I want to uh, 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 take you into the Word of God right now, the Word that God has given me today uh, to bring, to share with you. Uh, it's, uh, it's, an, it's an exhortation word. Amen. And I believe that you will be, you will be blessed. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this yet another wonderful time of our service to look into your word, to share your word, Lord. It's your word, Father, that you have given me to bring to your people. Thank you, Father. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you taking your word and you bring it into the hearts of people that are opened up to receive you. And thank you, Father, that your word has a purpose to accomplish in each and every one that hears and receives. So we give you praise for the power of God at work through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to bring you a word that um, the Lord, uh, you know, reminded of me. I remember about, I think, six, seven months ago, you know, it was in the summer last year. Uh, obviously, here in the United Kingdom, we were, we were in lockdown. And uh, I was looking into the book of Judges. I was studying the book of Judges. In fact, actually, it was... Uh, during the you know the uh, um, the the three chapter readings that we do in City Family Church, I think we were in the Book of Judges then, and uh, um, and so when 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 I was reading that, you know, there's something that the Lord showed me in the Book of Judges, and 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 then He began to speak to me about that, Amen. And I I, I wrote some notes, and uh, and actually I could see. That the Lord was releasing a message into my spirit around that, and I started writing the notes, uh, you know, about this message. Wow, well, this, this is going to be a, a, you know, a, a good word to encourage your people. But um, like many times, I have many messages that God gives me, and they're just there, they're backlogged, really. And I know at some point they'll come out. Go, I'll, I'll preach them. You know, I'm not in a hurry at all. You know, I bring what God wants to bring at the right time. Amen. Glory be to God. There are messages. Those of you that preach, we, we, you know, we know what I'm talking about. There are messages I have. In, and I'm like, Lord, when am I going to give me time to bring this word? This is so powerful. I want to bring it. You know, They are just there in my notes. And, 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 and sometimes every time I say, oh, this is going to be the Sunday. That, oh, this is going to be the time now. I'm going to bring this word because I just want to bring that word. Because in my own understanding, I'm thinking that's a very powerful word. It's a powerful revelation, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have no idea what happens behind the scenes <laughs> with women of God. We have powerful messages, amen. Come on, come on, preacher of God. Am I saying something right here? Yes, you know that. We have messages we call powerful. They are in the powerful message folder. And those that, you know, so when you are invited sometimes and you are preach, you, you go into that powerful messages, you know, and we'll preach that, you know. So you get invited again. <laughs> Glory to God, hallelujah. It's good, it's good sometimes to just have, have fun in the studio. So anyway, you know, God spoke to me. I, feel, I saw something in these in his chapters. And I was like, oh Lord, you know. And, and he began ministering to me, you know. And I, I was so ministered to you. I was like, wow. It was like a revelation. I said, oh, I'll build on this. And see if I can, this can become a message. And, and uh, uh, But I left it there because... God, again, as I said, every Sunday, you know, you seek him and says, no, drop that. Bring this one. So, so that's how it goes. Amen. And so again, so um, this week, he brought me back to that. I overpassed all the other messages. I said, go back to Judges. Remember that message. And because it's connected with what we've been sharing, you know, in the last couple of weeks. Amen. Remember the last time I was here, I talked about, you know, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit being 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 uh, 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 our coach in our lives, and 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 last Sunday, you know, um, our, our teacher in the, in in the church, and also uh, you know touched on that. Glory be to God. So God just brought me back to that. So I went back and found God in my Bible. 
you know, I, I, I write a few notes, you know, and so, so I picked on those and God over the week has just been developing this. So, so I want to invite you, I, I'll, I'll show the scriptures on the screen, but I want to invite you to the book of Judges chapter 1. So you've got your Bibles, open your Bible, because I'm going to read uh, a few verses in there and then I'll just show you the key verse on the screen when we come to that. Okay, because I want to see, I want you to see something in this, okay? So let, let's read uh, Judges chapter 1, starting from verse 1, amen? And I'm reading from the, uh, um, the uh, you know, New Standardized American Version. Praise God. Hallelujah. It says, Now it came about, after the death of Joshua, that the sons of Israel inquired of the Lord, saying, Who shall go up first? for us against the Canaanites to fight against them. And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have given the land into his hand. Then Judah said to Simeon, his brother, come up with me into the territory allotted to me, that we may fight against the Canaanites. And I in turn will go with you into the territory allotted to you. So Simeon went with him. And Judah went up, and the Lord gave the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hands. And they defeated 10,000 men at Bezek. And they found Adonai Bezek in Bezek and fought against him, and they defeated the Canaanites and the Perizzites. But Adonai Bezek fled. And they pursued him and caught him and cut off his hand, his thumbs and big toes. And Adonai Bezek said, Seventy kings with their thumbs and their big toes cut off, used, cut off, used to gather up, scra up scraps under my table, as I have done. So God has repaid me. So they brought him to Jerusalem. And he died there. Verse 8. Then the sons of Judah fought against Jerusalem and captured it and struck it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. And afterwards, the sons of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites living in the hill country and in the Negev in the low land. So Judah went against the Canaanites who lived in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron formerly was uh, uh, Kariath Seba. And they struck Shishai and Ahiman and Taumai. Verse 11. Then from there he went against the inhabitants of Deba. Now the name of Deba formerly was uh, Kirath Seba. And Caleb said, that's verse 12, And Caleb said, The one who attacks Kiriath Sefer and captures it, I'll give, I'll even give him my daughter Akisa as for a wife. Then it came about when she came to him that she persuaded him to ask her father for a field. Then she alighted from her donkey and Caleb said to her, What do you want? And she said to him, Give me a blessing. Since you have given me the land of the Negev, give me also springs of water. So Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. And the descendants of the, of, uh, of the uh, Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up from the city of, of, of Palms with the sons of Judah to the wilderness of Judah, which is in the south of, of Arad, and they went and lived with the people. Then Judah went with Simon, his brother, and they struck the Canaanites uh, living in Zephath and utterly destroyed it. So the name of the city was called uh, Homer. Maybe we can, we, we, can, we can end right there. Amen? Now, within there, brothers and sisters, is, um, and I'm going to just keep this today like an exhortation. Amen? Like an exhortation. So within this script that we've read is something that God spoke to me then, six, seven months ago, when I was studying this book of Judges. Amen. 
and and uh, and and this is why the Lord brought to my spirit this last one week to connect with some of the things that we've been teaching. Amen. Glory be to God. Now, I don't know about you, but when you read this script that we've just read from chapter one, you can go on and 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 read beyond where we just ended. There are certain things in there that will catch your eye. Okay. And one of the things that normally I think would catch somebody's eye in this scripture is what happened to this man called uh, Othenel. Okay? And hang on. Uh, yeah. I, th I think when I was reading this, I must have uh, skipped uh, chapter 13 somehow. Did I? Okay. Because uh, uh, verse 12 says, And Caleb said, The one who attacks Kiriath Sefer and captures it, I'll even give him my daughter Akisa for a wife. And now in verse 18, we see this, this man. <laughs> His name is uh, Othenio. And Othenio, the son of Kenas. Caleb's younger brother. So that means that Othene was actually uh, Caleb's uh, nephew. Okay? Captured it. He captured Kiriath Sefer. And so Caleb gave him his daughter Akisa for the wife. Okay? So there is a story in there that I'm sure somehow many of us, when we read these verses that we've just read, that incident there in verse 12 and 13 should catch your eye. <laughs> you remember uh, the last time I was, I was in the studio and I talked about the Holy Spirit. We talked about this story of uh, this rich man who had a daughter. And he wanted to give this, his daughter in marriage to a young man in, in, in the city or in the village, wherever this uh, rich man was. So he called all the young men. Uh, in 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 uh, to come to his, uh, his his palace if you want, and uh, and and through a party, you know, you may remember that story if you if you watch that message, and <laughs> and then you know at the point where he needed now to execute the plan to find who he would give his daughter hand in marriage, he gathered all the young men who were at the party around the swimming pool, and apparently in that swimming pool. He had put all these crocs and the snakes in there, you know, all the dangerous things that, you know, if they're in the swimming pool, you don't want to swim in there, you know. And then he said, you see this swimming pool is full of crocodiles and snakes. And you see he's standing next to me is my daughter. Okay, I'm just paraphrasing the whole story. And says, whoever is going to swim across this pool, I'll give my daughter hand in marriage for him. And you know, you marry that daughter, you marry everything. This man is rich. You know that man. <laughs> this man is rich. And all of a sudden, the story says that oh, there was a splash in the pool and there was this young man who was swimming. He swam, swam for his life. And thankfully, he got to the other end. Okay. And when he came out, the rich man was very impressed with him and says, well, wow, wow, wow. What do you want? In fact, in the offer was not just the uh, the daughter. He said you can choose between the daughter, or you can choose between the estate, or you can choose between you know I think there were about three choices of all the wealth that he held. So the rich man said to this young man, "What do you want? Do you want the estate?" And the young man says, "Oh no, no, sir." He said, "Oh yeah." So then, uh, do you want uh, the uh, the precious stuff the, that uh, you know? With that I own, he says, no, 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 sir. That's not what I want. Then the rich man says, well, I guess then. What you want is my daughter. And to the surprise, the young man says, no, sir. I don't want your daughter either. He says, well, what do you want? He says, I just want to lay my hand on the person who pushed me into the, into the pool. So that <laughs> story. Now, <laughs> I'm reading <laughs> Othino's, I, you know, story here okay that here is at stake the offer <laughs> from Caleb to marry his daughter but 
what the man has to do, who has to marry the daughter, is defeat the, uh, the enemy of Israel. Kiriathepa. He says, whoever defeats our enemies, I'll give him my daughter. Now, you know, Caleb is a prominent person in the nation of Israel. And to marry into his family, you marry everything. <laughs> you marry everything. So, now, this verse tells us in 13 that this man, Othiniel, who later on turns up to be the first judge of Israel, actually, defeated Kriathepa. And he was given Akisa, the son of Kerab. So in other words, really, Othiniel <laughs> mar mar married his, uh, his cousin. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. By Bible days, we got these uh, interesting uh, combinations, uh, marital combinations. You know, <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, but that was the case. Now we would all say that Othiniel married well, isn't it? I mean, uh, he's married into the family of this prominent, prominent powerful man in Israel, this leader, national leader, Kerem, he's married his daughter. He's, he's married into this socially uh, high status, high status family. He's, 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 he's got access to all the prosperity. He's got access to, uh, to, 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 to everything that the wife will bring into his marriage. You know, you know, the door is open to Athenel to become anything. You know, probably there was even that, you know, that led to him becoming the first judge of, of, of Israel. All of a sudden, this fighter, this courageous, brave fighter, Athenel, has become somebody because he's married uh, into uh, the family of Kerem. But you see, that is not what, even though I looked at that, I'm talking about then, seven months ago, even though this particular part struck me, I said, wow, wow, he married into Caleb's uh, family through his courage, his brevity, amen, and, and, and he went on to be the judge of Israel. Othiniel. Well, he married well, we would say. But then, that's not what God showed me into this. God showed me something that I would say is the reason why one would say Othiniel married well. Not necessarily the, these things that the, 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 the prominence of the family, the, the importance of the family, the influence of the family, of, of the, of the father-in-law. No. Othiniel married well because of verse 15. Here is the reason why Othiniel married well. It's because Othiniel married a woman who made the right choice. Hallelujah. The reason why Othineo married well, it's not simply because he married into this powerful family. No. Othineo married well because of verse 15. And what does 15 say? Verse 15 says, And, this is Akitha now, they are the daughter of Kerab. And she said to him, to Kerab the father, Give me a blessing. Since ye have given the land of the Negev, give me also the springs of water. So Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. Wow. Wow. This is what, to me, I would say, Othineo married well. Why? Because he married a woman who then went on 
to make a choice that probably many people would not have made. She asked the father to give her the springs of water. And the father went on to give her both the upper springs and the lower springs. So that means Othene now did not only have the land, but he also had the waters that water the land. Wow. Somebody talk about making the right choice. Now I want to say something to somebody. Have you been given an opportunity in your life to ask, to choose? And I'm talking about you've been given an opportunity to ask whatever you want and it will be given to you and by somebody that is prominent, somebody that is wealthy, somebody that has got everything and says, ask whatever you want and I'll give it to you. What would you choose? Knowing you can ask for the gold and the silver and it will be given to you. You can ask for the mansions and it will be given to you. You can ask for all the money in the bank accounts of this uh, 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 enabling uh, opportunity and it will be given to you. You can ask for power and position and it will be given to you. Now I know that this is a little bit hypothetical. Maybe you've never been uh, you know, before such an opportunity. But I'm just trying to, uh, uh, you know, give you, you know, that perspective that there you are. Before this opportunity, and it's a real opportunity. Say, so ask whatever you want. Here is a situation of this uh, young lady, Akisa, knowing the father has everything, including power. Maybe you are born in a family of, 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 of loyalty. Maybe you are born in a, in, in, in a wealthy family. And you know these things do happen in this world. And, and you are about to, 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 to live and, 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 and set up your own life. And your father comes to you and says, well, to get you started off, what do you want? Whatever you want. I am happy to share it with you. To give it to you. Maybe like even that prodigal son in the Bible. Who went to the father and says, Father, now I'm of age. Can you split my share and give it to me? Because I want to go away and set up and start off my own life. And the father gave it to him. If that way are you, what would you choose? You know you need a house. You need money. You need power. You need fame. You need titles. What would you ask for? I am reminded in the Bible of the story of Martha and Mary. The Bible says in Luke chapter 10 from verse 38 that Jesus was entering this village. Maybe let's look at that, that scripture uh, and just read it as, as, as it is. That Jesus was entering and traveling along and entered a certain village. That is in Luke chapter 10 verse 38. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And she had a sister called Mary who moreover was listening to the Lord's word and seated at his feet. But Martha was distracted with all her preparations. And she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, 
matter. You are worried and bothered about so many things. But the only few things are necessary. Only few things are necessary. Lily, only one. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Listen to those words. For Mary has chosen. You can even say in terms of asking. For Mary has asked for the best part. That word good there simply means the best. Because you can see the scripture says that there are many things that are necessary. But only one. And that's what Mary has chosen. And that will not be taken away from her. So there you are. I come back to my hypothetical question once again. There you are. You might. I'm making this very hypothetical. But you might. Come up this kind of uh, situation in your life. Where you have to choose. There's an opportunity. And that's what God is giving in this word. It's about making the right choice. Putting priorities in order. What would you ask for? We have a situation here where Akisa goes back to the father and she's asking for a wedding gift, a wedding present. Oh, I tell you what, if I am enabled with all the wealth, and I want to give my daughter a wedding gift. I'll give her something. Lily, something that may be a beautiful car. Maybe, a, a, you know, a, some funds to get them started off and get a mortgage. And, you know, maybe something like that. We've all seen these things that people do. That are enabled to do them. Akisa had a choice. She was approaching a father who had everything. The whole land of the Negev was in the hands of the father. And this is what she chose. It looks a little bit silly. She says, give me the springs of water. And the father goes on to give her the upper streams and the lower streams. Making choices that matter. Putting priorities right. When you ask for the best thing, you have everything else. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In my exhortation today, brothers and sisters, that is the title of my exhortation. The Akisa Christian. The Akisa Christian. Are you the Akisa Christian? Now who is the Akisa Christian? The Akisa Christian is the one who knows to ask the most important. The one who knows the most necessary of all things. Because once you have that, you have everything. Who is the Akisa Christian? Is the one who knows that once I have this, I have everything else. Glory be to God. Akisa knew that water was the source of life and prosperity. She knew that. She could have gone before the father and says, extend the, 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 the girl. You know, give it me all the way and we'll put boundaries over there. And, and give me all these horses and all these soldiers. But she rode her donkey 
I said, no, no, no. The land is okay. But there's something more important. And once I have this, I have all the prosperity. She asked for the springs of water. She had this request, which shows practical wisdom of how we need to prioritize our Christian life. She realized what was the key to call agricultural abundance, especially in the arid land of the Negev. The Negev was literally uh, a desert. And you see, the Bible says these were springs. Hallelujah. They were springs. So that means that you know, springs are not just rivers. Springs come from underneath. And then they, they spring out. So springs are very nicely oxygenated. They, have, they bring fresh waters. Hallelujah. Ah, I do remember. In my upbringing, amen. Hallelujah. In my upbringing in some part of the world, I do remember this very well. I would walk through, you know, you know, early in the morning, you know, through these little paths and, and there's dew on the, on the grass and, 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 and the water. I remember actually we would actually, you know, you know drink some of the hot water from the leaves. Fresh. Springs of water, oxygenated, hallelujah. You know, Akisa knew that all the oxen, all the animals would be refreshed. All the crops would grow if she owns these streams of water, hallelujah. So what's the spiritual significance of this? What did God show me? In this, so I moved from this verse, verse, verse 11, you know, about wow, what a story of Athenia marrying into this powerful family. Oh, Athenia, well done, your bravery to go and conquer the Kriath uh, Sepa, and, and you get this woman who's from a very prominent family. God moved my attention from that into verse 15 that the big and the most important part of this portion of scripture is where Akisa asks for the springs of water. So what is the God, what was God revealing to me then? God is revealing to me, no, the springs of water represent the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. They are living waters. Amen. They are living waters. It's the Holy Spirit. The springs of water, they are figurative of the Holy Spirit. So there is, there is, there is, there is a metaphor here of the Holy Spirit being the spring into our lives. Hallelujah. And if we are going to ask God for anything, hallelujah, we're going to ask Him for the springs of living water that will spring through us from the upper heights of the mountains to the lower valleys, just flowing through our lives and never ever going dry. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And this is what we saw last week when, when, when we looked at the, the fact that Jesus himself prayed to the Father to ask him to give us a helper. And this is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We saw these scriptures in John chapter 14 verse 16 says, I'll ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you always, always, hallelujah. Like those springs. You know what it means from the upper springs, the lower springs means that there is continuity, hallelujah. There is no breakage at all. There is a continuous flow from the springs, you know, in the upper mountains, hallelujah, to the lower level. Was the less of the Negev desert could be dry, Akisa and now her husband Othineo and all that they had, the animals, had a place ever of refreshing. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So this is the Holy Spirit. And verse 14, uh, uh, verse 26 says, But the help of the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all things that I said to you. Because he will be there always. He will never dry. 
the spring of life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So Akisa asks for a wedding gift from the Father. And that is the spring of life. Glory be to God. You know, we are reminded of a story in the book of, uh, in, 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 in the same uh, book of John, you know, uh, from uh, verse, verse 10. There was this encounter here where Jesus met this woman uh, at the well. This, listen to what, what, what the story you know, says. Jesus answered and said to her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that says to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Oh, hallelujah! This woman is about to realize that she would have asked for the best thing ever. She asked, hallelujah, for what was perishable and would never quench her thirst. But Jesus said, if thou would have known, you would have asked for the best gift ever, like Akisa did. Akisa asked for the best gift for her wedding from the Father. And Jesus is saying to this woman, the gift that I would give you would be the gift of living water. Hallelujah living water and then he added and God on saying in verse 14 but whoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst <laughs> hallelujah but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life Woo! now do you see the metaphor in Judges chapter 1 with Aksa asking for the streams of water and the father giving her the springs of the upper mountains all the way to the lower valleys. Continuous flow. And Jesus is saying the same thing to this woman. These living waters shall flow inside of you and you will never thirst again. Brothers and sisters, this is the promise Jesus gave us and he fulfilled hallelujah this is the the, the 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 appointment that jesus gave to the holy spirit to come back to come to us and be the living water that waters us all the time it doesn't matter whether we are at the mountain top or we are in the valley areas the springs of the holy spirit will flow every moment of our lives and we will never thirst again Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Woo. So the Holy Spirit is for day-to-day -day life. It's for day-to-day. -day. And I want to emphasize this sometimes to us Pentecostals. Like Akisa, a Christian, an Aksa Christian, is the one who believes that the spiritual water is vital to their life. Why? Because Akisa knew that having the whole Negev, the whole land, <laughs> that even her, the, 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 her eye could not catch the horizons, was meaningless without the source of life, the springs. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, without Jesus, we can do nothing. But with the Holy Spirit, we can do all things. And this is the reason why Jesus appointed him to be with us. He is the spring that flows through our lives. He gives us the very life of Jesus Christ. He empowers us. He gets us going. He guides us. He teaches us. He shows us things. We cannot go far without him. We will be on arid ground. Hallelujah. And this Holy Spirit is for day-to-day -day life. Like the springs were continuously flowing. It's not just for the day you gave your life to Jesus. It's not just for the day when you got baptized in the Holy Ghost. 
You know, come on, come on, Pentecostals. It's not just for the day when you attend that powerful conference. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost conference and, and there's, a, there's a fire of the Holy Ghost in the place. And you feel him. And then a few days down the road, you don't feel him. It's not, it's not just for that. It's not just for this time that you are listening to me right now. And you are feeling his presence. You are feeling his power and you are excited. It's not just for that. It's for the continuous flow. Hallelujah. It's a spring. Glory be to God. It's perennial. <laughs> Hallelujah. Like that water Jesus was ministering to that woman at the well. That the water that I give you, if you knew, they would be like living waters in your life. And you will never thirst again. Are you an Akisa Christian? Glory be to God. The Holy Spirit is for every day living. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All days of our lives. Every morning. Every hour. Hallelujah. Every, in every trying situation. Oh, glory be to God. Remember those springs are flowing through the rocks and, 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 and the sands of, of the Negev. They are not in the best environment ever but they are still flowing hallelujah and they are, they are giving life to to agriculture around them to the vegetation around them to the animals around them they are a watering and refreshing spring the holy spirit does the same thing for us beloved in 2021 and i continue talking about 2021 we are still in the upper you know part of 2021 we still have a lot of 2021 to go. God is saying to us, use the helper I've given you. He never runs out. He never leaves you. He is the very living water that you need in your Christian walk every day of your life. Even in times of a dark night, even in times where life is just looking, you is grinding, the spring of water is there to refresh us. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Glory be to God. He has been appointed by God to give us abundant life. Remember in John chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible says, And and but I come that you may have life and life abundantly. This is the life of Jesus. Life abundantly. But Jesus is gone. The Holy Spirit now is the one who has come to do exactly what Jesus gives us. That life abundantly. Many times we have uh, mis, uh, uh, misplaced this life abundantly to mean property, to mean money, to mean social prominency, to mean pressure, to mean power. All that, Kerib, Akisa's dad, had. And Akisa could have asked for that. But she asked for something that will bring abundance and prosperity to the land. Springs of living water. Jesus said, the enemy comes for nothing but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life. And not only life, but life abundantly. The Holy Spirit gives us the life of Jesus in abundance. What is this abundance life? More of him. More of Jesus. More of biblical insight. Come on, you remember before you became a Christian. And before I became a Christian, I could not even understand a single thing in this. I mean, during a Bible study, we had the testimony of somebody who got saved. Who could not understand Romans chapter 8, verse 20, 29 and verse 30. And, 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 and now, they understand these things. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. It's giving them insight. Insight. Of, of God's word. Hallelujah. 
You know the same word in the Bible that annoyed me in the same way that God used to, to, to save my life. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I was in tears. He gave me insight. The Holy Spirit. He gives us abundant life. The sense of His presence. Come on somebody. It's all by the Holy Spirit. More strength of mind. Renewed mind and spirit. More physical vigor. Come on yes. The Holy Spirit will, will invigorate us. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. More understanding of the things to come. Revelation of the word of God. Hallelujah. God bringing things out of his word. Glory be to God. Sensitivity to God speaking to us. We can hear God. <laughs> Ooh, call, call, call that what you want. That's abundant life. That's abundant life. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Alertness to false teachings. Oh, I tell you, there are many things that I'm debunking right now because of the Holy Spirit who's coming to me. Because when I became a Christian, some people tried to take advantage of me and taught me things that were wrong. But thank God for the Holy Spirit, my teacher, my guide. He, he, he gave me the, the, the sensitivity to understand false from truth. I can see it come here and say, this doesn't sound right. This doesn't sound all right. The Holy Spirit. Sensitivity. That's abundant life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Go oh, things I could I could say here. You know, you know, moral strength when temptations press. Hallelujah. He speaks to you. He's like that red right to say, look, don't go through that red right. Before I became a Christian, there were no red rights in my life. As a matter of fact, I bragged over 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 wrong stuff. You turn up at work on a Monday and you are bragging about the things that you did. You know, the things that, you know, today I feel shameful about. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, the life of Jesus, has given me abundance life. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. I have inclination to worship him. Glory be to God. To worship Jesus. Hallelujah, every any moment. I enjoy it. Christian music is such wonderful music to my ears. Oh, hallelujah. And all that music I used to enjoy before, you know, you know, it doesn't mean anything at all to me. Sometimes you hear it and you say, ah, oh, okay, that number, yeah, yeah. But when, when, when I hear the, the worship music like we were worshiping just before, oh, this is abundant life. Why is it abundant? Because those who do not have the springs of water flowing through them cannot experience this life. It's special. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So maybe you want to go back there and redefine abundant life. All these other things, property, money, whatever, all these are additions, hallelujah. They don't define abundance. Abundance is the life of God himself. And everything else is just an addition. That's why the Bible says the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. Sometimes we have a nice beautiful and say, I am blessed. Of course you are blessed. But you see, that's the car. It's not the abundance of life. Jesus has given you and I. Hallelujah. Those are add-ons. Glory be to God. Let me conclude this. So in, 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 in verse 15, and Caleb gave her the upper streams and the lower streams. So Akisa received all the water available in the upper elevations and in the lower part of the Negev. <laughs> and I was saying, Lord, you know, what, what would this uh, imply? I see a spiritual uh, connotation of this. You know, the Holy Spirit never leaves us. It's continuously flowing in our lives. When you are at the mountain tops, He is there, hallelujah, bubbling through your life. 
And it's a great place to be. But even when you are in the lower valleys, the springs of water are there. Glory be to God. He's ever flowing in our lives. He's refilling us in our higher and lower seasons of our lives. Be conscious of him when you are in that season. Amen. Sometimes when we are at the mountain top faith, glory to God. Ever heard of that? Mountain top faith. Amen. A great term. Hallelujah. Mountain top faith ministries. <laughs> Hallelujah. But wait until when you are in the valley. And there probably are thistles around that valley. There are no roses in that valley. Wait maybe until when you are walking through the desert. And you are dashing your feet against the rocks. And you are walking, paddling on those sands that are so unstable and so shaky. You are tired. You are weary. There is a stream of God's life. The Holy Spirit. Somebody welcome the Holy Spirit. He never leaves us. He's always there. Oh, he flows through us. Oh, Sharaba Kandaya. Ria Kandrobo Shikete and Mama. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. You've been appointed to refresh me. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Prophetess Jane begin continue to allow him to flow and the bubble through you. Mm. Let him flow through you. Let him flow through you. Let him flow through you. It doesn't matter where you are. Both at the mountain top. But even in those moments, you are a channel of his flow. He is living waters. He is not stagnant. He desires a channel to flow. Come on, church. Let him flow through our lives. He's right inside of you. Even when you're walking <laughs> through that Negev desert. You know the spring never says, where are the waters? It knows it is the waters. <laughs> it doesn't matter where it is. It is the waters. It just allows the waters to flow. Oh, glory to God. I just feel his presence right now. I feel his presence right now. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Father, for, this, for your presence. Thank you, Jesus. When you are going through valleys of testing, the lower springs, when you are at the mountain top, the upper springs. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, what a life. Abundant life. This is the life God has given us. Oh, glory to God. The other reason why Akisa asked the Father for the springs. Is because she knew her crops, the animals, would need somewhere to go and drink when they are thirsty. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. This is what Isaiah 41 verse 17 says. When the poor and the needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open up rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water. And the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar. 
the sight tree and the myrtle and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together. Oh, what a beautiful promise. So what he says? He says, I will set up rivers in both the high places and the lower places. Hallelujah. Let me say something to you. You are the river of God. And his Holy Spirit desires to flow through you. And because of you, hallelujah, because of you, those around you who are thirsty, those that are needing refreshment, they will be revived. They will be reinvigorated. They will get life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Holy Spirit is not only there to water you and to refresh you. He also waters those that are around you. There was life around those springs. And those that were panting, the deers, the ox, the donkeys, the sheep, the oxen, they are panting for the waters. They know where that spring is. Hallelujah. And they are running to go and drink. That's who you are. Come on, somebody. Just begin to prophesy to yourself right now. Say, I am the spring of waters. I am the spring of living waters. Begin to prophesy to you. And those that are thirsty shall come to me and drink. They shall come to me and drink. They shall come to me and drink. They shall come to me and drink. Come on. I'm prophesying to myself right now. I am the spring of waters. Them that are thirsty shall come to me and drink. My family members, my friends, whether they like me or not, I know God has promised me as a living spring I'm flowing from the upper levels to the lower levels and they shall come and drink of me I have got this testimony in my own life and I believe you have the testimony as well I am not the most prominent person in my family I've got many siblings I might have titles that I've acquired but I've got this testimony that the one thing that my life carries an impact on my family is my life of God in me. Oh, hallelujah. It has impacted other family members and they've gone on to impact other family members. They've gone on to impact other family members and the spring of life is just flowing. It's the same thing with friends. That is the abundant life. Now I'm not saying this by any means to say, to judge yourself and say, but that has not happened. People keep rejecting me. You cannot be rejected. You are a spring of water. Them that you think are rejecting you, they are just rejecting themselves. God has provided through you the spring of water. Keep speaking to yourself. They will come and drink one day. Glory be to God. Because what is in you will never be quenched. It's a living perennial stream of water. The Holy Spirit. Until you yourself quench him. If you don't, you will always be that river. God says, I will open rivers in the high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness of pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Hallelujah! What an abundant life you and I have because of the Holy Spirit. I will ask of my Father to give you the Holy Spirit. Oh, come on, brother and sister. We have an appointed helper. Let us allow him to help us to have the abundant life of Jesus. Are you an Akisa Christian? What's your desire? <laughs> My question was hypothetical at the beginning of this encouragement. What would you choose? What would you ask for? Are you the Akisa Christian? Your desire 
is for the best thing. The best is the Holy Spirit. The very best of God. The Holy Spirit. You know, Akisa is not the first only person in the Bible associated with the springs of water. I'll just very quickly tell you about this and then I'll close this. I'm closing in the next few minutes. Abraham. <laughs> of all the things God had blessed him when he was before Abimelech. Of all the things in Genesis 21, Abraham said, Abimelech, I am still not happy about one thing. I want our springs of waters back. <laughs> and Abimelech says, hang on. Who told you about this? Oh, okay. Because now Abimelech knows that Abraham is, 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 is a prophet of God. And he better handle him well. So he says, I'm very, very sorry about in the, the springs of, of your people and your servants that, you know, we, 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 we have taken away and destroyed. You know, you could have them back. Abraham, the first thing, when Abimelech begins to repent before God, the first thing Abraham says to Abimelech, I want the springs, the wells back. Why? Because without the springs and the wells, Abraham will not go very far. You will be like a car running on an empty, empty tank. And you keep watching that tank. <laughs> you don't want that situation. You know, I push it a little bit with my car. My wife doesn't like that when she's in the car. She says, why do you always punch it? There's a filling station there. I'm like, oh, we can go a little bit. <laughs> you know, you want, we won't go far. That's why God has given us his fuel. His power, His water, the living springs. Ooh, hallelujah. You don't need to change the filters. He is self-refreshing. He flows through us. Abraham. But we see also his son Isaac. Oh, Isaac was continuously digging the wells. Even those that were destroyed by the enemies. Isaac had to redig them. He dug the wells five times or more than that. Why? Because without the wells going deeper... We cannot live the life of God. Oh, hallelujah. In the New Testament, I'm reminded in the book of Acts of the woman called Lydia. Wealthy, wealthy woman. You know, the, you know and, and, and in, in, at the church of Philippi. And she became so prominent at the church of Philippi. Very wealthy woman. And here is an inspiration. Come on, rich people. There are wealthy people that have been prominent in building the early church of God. Lydia was one of them. Wealthy woman. She was selling apparel. She wouldn't have bothered about it. But when Paul was passing by, she was one of those praying women. And they loved to pray at the river. Oh, hallelujah. At the riverside. She loved the waters. Glory be to God. May you and I be the Akisa Christian. Lovers of waters. Springs. Oh, ooh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Ah, glory be to God. I come from Southern Africa, you know, uh, you know, you know, Northern Rhodesia and Southern Rhodesia, we have, we have springs, many springs there, many springs. And the Queen of England sent her people, you know, to come down there and, and, and they saw the springs and said, oh, these are beautiful. And they named them after their queen. <laughs> because they're just beautiful waters coming down. But that spring is inside you and I. What an abundant life. Woo, it's just bubbling through us. So like Abraham, like Akisa, like Isaac, like Lydia, may we be people that desire the springs of water, the Holy Spirit who has been given unto us. May we be the source that is full of the Holy Spirit, that his waters will flow through us deep in prayer, deep in worship, deep in reading the word of God. Hallelujah. Deep wells. Sinking the deep wells. Like, like Isaac did. Digging them deep. That is going into the word of God. Hallelujah. Like Lydia. 
by the riverside worshiping God and praying, praying in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Like Abraham and, and Isaac, rivers of refreshment, like Akisa. Hallelujah. You just see it and be refreshed by him. That's what he's there for. We don't have to be weary all the time. He is there to refresh us. Be the source of refreshment to other people as well. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. I hope you've been encouraged by this. In the name of Jesus, you have within you. Glory be to God. Leave us of spring waters. Hallelujah. Oh, springs of living waters. Oh, you see, Isaac did not just dig the new wells. He dug the old ones as well. He cleaned them. He cleaned them. So they could contain fresh water again. The Spirit of the Living God is just telling me to, to tell somebody right now, and please don't take offense, that He wants you to clean up the well. Remove all the leaves and the things that are falling in, and so, so he, can, he can begin to flow. You know, he's, he's meant to flow unhindered. He's not a stagnant waters. He's a spring. He flows and block and clock. Remove the clutter. Let him flow. Just bring this challenge to us right now. It says, may I flow through you. May I flow through you. If only you knew and you know <laughs> how much abundance of life I want to give you. I want to give you. You would keep the wells clean. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Rabbi Shandara Mama Makaya. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our lives to refresh us. Get us moving and going every moment of our lives. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Just pray these words after me if you can. Say, sweet Holy Spirit, you are appointed to help me when I'm unable. To refresh me when I'm thirsty. To fill me when I'm low. To lift me up when I'm downcast. To empower me when I'm weak. And to flow through me when I need to revive others. Without you, I can do nothing. Like Akisa. Like Abraham. Like Isaac. Like Lydia. I desire you more than anything I can have. Come afresh on me. Right now. Oh, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, let him come upon you. Don't get up from that sofa too quickly when I finish this service. Stay there. Stay there. Let him finish what he is doing in you. Don't get up. Don't get into the kitchen and begin to prepare food. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Right now, you said. Right now. He's coming right now. He does what you desire. 
Say, feel me, Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, feel me right now, Holy Spirit. Feel me right now. Holy, feel me. I need you, Lord. Mold me. Shape me. Remove the bits that are not pleasing to you. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Oh, Spirit of the living God, come afresh on me. In the name of Jesus, I ask you. Amen. But as I said, don't move. Feel he's working on you. Just stay in that presence. Stay in that place. Even when I have disappeared from your screen. He is there with you. Rabashi Karamandaya. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, we want to be Akisa Christians. We desire the springs of the upper springs and the lower springs flowing through us as living waters. Sweet Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. For afresh. On me. Well God bless you. Hallelujah. And God is touching you. Amen. God is touching you every day of your life. He's touching your mind. He's touching your soul. He's touching your body as well. There's a healing anointing upon you. That's what he does. He ministers to all of you. Glory be. Just receive. Receive your expectation. In the name of Jesus. And give him the other glory. Glory be to God. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for joining in. God bless you. God bless the rest of this week. Stay with him. Stay by the well. Hallelujah. Not just staying by the well. <laughs> be the well. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> you are the well. The spring of water. Ah, the Holy Spirit is pleased. Lady, he is pleased over you right now. This is what he loves. He is pleased. Hallelujah. Wow. We will be led by the Spirit, grow in exceeding faith, and abound in love. Shalom to you. God bless you. And we'll see you again soon.